Okay, this is going to be a really fun episode. You're going to see everything that you can do with Rails scaffold generators right here. So I'm going to type in Rails G scaffold and then give our database table a name. And because this we're creating an application for project management, I'm going to call it project. And from here, we give it attributes. So I'll say title and then you do a a colon and then what you want the data type of that attribute to be. So I'm going to say title colon string. Then I'm going to do description colon text because we want data type. And if you're not familiar with uh, data types in uh, databases, then uh, that's fine. String is a data type uh, that has a smaller number of characters. Text has a much, much larger number of characters. A great example of this would be, say you were creating a book application. The chapter names would be strings. The chapters themselves, the body of the chapters, would be text and that would be able to uh, hold it. If you tried to do a string for something that has a ton of characters, like a book chapter, then you're gonna run into some very odd errors and you're gonna have your application crash and the database crash because it's expecting a certain max allotment of characters and you're giving it more. So that's why I put, for things like descriptions, I like to stay on the safe side and, uh, and put text to make sure I always have enough characters. And uh, I had a story actually from a few months ago where I, had, I was working, uh, one of my clients is Eventbrite, and we had a, a, a little bug we couldn't figure out. And it turns out that one of the data types that really seemed like it would always be a size of a string ended up being larger and it kept crashing one of the modules and uh, once I figured that out switched over to text it fixed everything so a lot of times even when you've been doing this for a while uh, you'll still pick the wrong one so you have to really have a good idea for the type of data type that you're going to be working for so next is percent underscore complete because I want to have a value in the database for each project that is kind of like a running total. So if a project has a bunch of tasks associated with it, say it has 10 tasks associated with it, if eight of those tasks are complete, I want a way to look right at project and say, okay, this one is 80% complete. So the data type that I'm going to go with for this is going to be decimal. I could also use the data type float. Uh, just my own practice based off my own experience i always go with a decimal because it's more precise it takes up a little bit more space but i'm not really i don't think this application is going to be very uh, uh very memory intensive or it's nor not going to be putting it on a small microchip or anything like that so decimal should be perfectly fine now if i hit return then it's going to run this full generator and in the next video we're going to go into everything that it created for us so we can almost kind of reverse engineer all of that to see what got built out but in this one i want to show you what it does from a functionality point of view and so we'll go through all this code later and then uh, here i'm going to go rake space db colon migrate and this is going to give us our database migration and you need to do this or else the application won't work. So let's run the Rails server and let's see what we have here. Open up the browser, go to localhost 3000. And for this one, you have to go slash projects. And the reason for that is because 3000 is still going to be pointed to new uh, or to the new project or I'm sorry. <laughs> you get their uh, terminology confused, uh, our new application, which is that Rails homepage. And uh, we're going to switch over. I'm going to show you how you can create the homepage here shortly. Uh, okay, so we have listing projects. So this shows, this will show all the different projects we create. And so all of this, you notice we didn't write any code. If I click on new project and just say test 
project one, I can give this any description that I want and percent complete. I'm going to leave this blank because uh, this is going to be auto generated for us. So we'd never manually put this in. Hit create project and it saved it to the database. If I hit back, you can see now it's right here. And we could do this as many times as, uh, as we'd want. Hit create project and you can see it's added this. So without writing any code, our scaffold gave us full CRUD functionality. We already have a database driven application where you can create records. You can see right here, you can edit these records. So I could call this another title, hit update project, it saved, and now we have another title right here. I can delete these. Uh, it goes with the name of destroy, it means delete. And it even gives us a little JavaScript pop-ups like, are you sure you want to delete this? Hit OK, and it updates it. You even have things like your little notices up here. So you can see, without writing any code, the scaffold gives us a ton of functionality right out of the box. So it's very cool, and it's a great thing that Rails has. And uh, there's been times where someone needed a really simple application that within a day, by leveraging some of these automated code generating products that uh, ships with Rails, uh, you, I was able to deliver very basic, a very buggy uh, application, but in a very, very short period of time. So uh, this is a, uh, it, it's a great tool and it's something that you, I'm sure you'll use from time to time. On a day-to-day -day basis, it's rare that I use it, and I'll show you why in the next video, because you'll see exactly how much code it took to be generated to do all of this, and it's very rare that I'd ever want all of this, uh, which can lead to some wasteful code and things like that. But besides for that, it's really cool to see. It's great for if you're a new Rails developer to be able to jump in and be able to create an application that has this much functionality right away. So in the next video, we're going to see all the code that the generator ran for us and that we now have available in the application.